this video, we'll be combining two Staphylococcus species. They are Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus. Our scene takes on the everyday excitement we all have to deal with, bad plumbing. So let's get to drawing out the backdrop of the scene. You'll notice we're using a lot of violet color, and this is to signify gram positive, or those organisms that take up a lot of crystal violet stain. Our structure for this segment will be to discuss unique features of Epidermidus first, then those of Saprophyticus, and finally we'll talk about their shared features. And we'll be illustrating all of the unique characteristics of Staph Epidermidus around our plumber here. First, you should know that Staph Epidermidus is an enemy of orthopedic surgeons because it often infects artificial joints and other implanted hardware. So to remind you of that, we've drawn a bunch of hardware down here that our plumber is working on. Staph aureus is actually the number one cause of infection, but is more commonly associated with acute onset. Staph epi would be more for indolent infections. Now we'll draw some tubing down here under the sink that looks like catheter tubes. And this is because indwelling catheters are also important causes of infection. Staph epidermidis is everywhere. It's given the name because it's natural floor of the skin. When you penetrate the skin with a line, it makes sense that the staph epidermidis would be the culprit of these infections. Finally, the third major area of infection for staph epidermidis is really the same as the first, an artificial implant, but it's slightly special. You have to know that it's the most common cause of endocarditis affecting artificial heart valves. So we'll draw some valves over here, and one will be shaped like a heart. One reason epidermidis is so good at infecting prostheses, implanted heart valves, and catheters is because it has found a way to stick to sleek metal and plastic surfaces. It produces this copious adherent biofilm, which is a mess of polysaccharide, that not only helps it stick to surfaces, but it's also a coating that protects it from exposure to antibiotics and immune cells. To help you remember these biofilms, we'll draw a bunch of gunk under this sink, coating all the pipes, tubes, and valves. I think that's pretty intuitive. Since Epidermidus is able to produce these biofilms, it is resistant to many antibiotics. You have to bring out the big guns. Current guidelines state that you should treat suspected staph epiendocarditis with vancomycin. So to help you remember this, we'll include our vancomycin van in the background, visible outside the window. Also, you should know if an implanted joint is infected, it's more than likely you'll have to replace it. Staph epidermidis is a nasty little bugger. If you were to draw blood cultures on me in a not completely sterile way, then there's a good chance that staph epi would grow, even though I'm not infected with it. Or at least I hope I'm not. But this is because, as I mentioned earlier, it's normal flora of the skin, so it's everywhere and can easily contaminate cultures when blood is drawn. To remember this, we're just going to put some dirt on the plumber's hands. And then we'll draw this drip pan over here that looks a lot like a blood culture petri dish. And we're showing dirty liquid dropping into the culture, representing contamination. All right, we're almost done with Staph epidermidis, but there's one more thing you should be aware of. We can use Novobiosin susceptibility to help us distinguish Staph epidermidis from Staph saprophyticus. Novobiosin is an old antibiotic that was derived from the fungus Streptomyces nevius. Our plumber is using Supernova Drain Buster, and this will help you remember that Staph Epidermidis, which is the plumbing, is destroyed by Novobiosin, aka Novobiosin sensitive. If you remember this, just remember that Saprophyticus is the opposite. So that's it for Staph Epidermidis. Let's move on to Staph Saprophyticus. All of the features of Staph Saprophyticus will be near our newlywed here, who just got back from her honeymoon, as you can tell by her promotional t-shirt. And the reason we're mentioning honeymoon is because Staph saprophyticus is a common cause of honeymoon cystitis. And this is a urinary tract infection that occurs in association with sexual activity, but it's not a sexually transmitted infection. The reason for this is an anatomical one. The shorter female urethra is thought to increase susceptibility to getting this lower UTI. To help you extra remember that Staph saprophyticus causes UTIs, we're gonna draw in this patented sketchy UTI symbol which is a yellow drink that's shaped like a bladder, and it has these two straws coming out of it that look like ureters. And we've added our recurring prostate-shaped apple to remind you to think about Staph saprophyticus as a gram-positive culprit for acute bacterial prostatitis. Okay, now that you're familiar with these two different Staph strains, let's talk about their common features. 
First, both of these microbes are catalase positive. To remember this, we'll have our catalase positive cat here. All staphs are catalase positive, and this will be one of the ways you can tell staph from strep. Last and most important of the shared characteristics is that you should know that both of these microbes are coagulase negative. This is in contrast to Staph aureus, which is coagulase positive. In fact, you'll often just hear Staph epidermidis referred to as a coag negative staph, and they won't even mention the name. So to remember this important feature, we'll have a bowl of jello here on the counter. The jello is untouched with a nice smooth surface and is liquidy. It doesn't look coagulated at all. Remember, in contrast to Staph aureus, which had the Red Sea that was parted and all coagulated. To make sure that you make this comparison, we've added a little bit of subtlety here. Notice the Jello brand is Moses's Jello to help you make the connection that coag negative separates it from Staph aureus. We also made the hyphen red so it looks like a negative symbol. And that's it. We've knocked out two microbes in this one cohesive sketch.